Good morning, gang. It's, uh, or good afternoon. It's Saturday, the 1st of November, 2014. Good morning, and welcome to our weekly hour-long talk show. My name's Chris Reardon, and uh, the nice weather goes on and on. We had, yesterday, sort of uh, another summer's day. And it's just like that this morning. It's a little bit cooler today, but the sun is shining brightly. There is not a cloud in the sky. It's beautiful out there. Absolutely beautiful. Perhaps if you're in the UK, you should be taking me out on a little little iPhone or something like that and viewing like that today, rather than stuck in front of your computer. Oh, well, I found a new way of seeing how people watch the show. Actually, on YouTube, you get these various different things. And someone watches me on a television. Who is it who watches on a television? Is it, I'd love to know who you are. There's an email address if you want to join in at any time. Email address is chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. Chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. And to add to the add to the beautiful day this morning, I switched on my um, iPhone. And there was a little WhatsApp video message from my beautiful niece, Tracy. And that's just nice, you know, hello, uncle. Well, she, 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 she starts off by calling me loser. My, my niece does call me a loser. She says, L-O-S-E-R, 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 loser is your name. Hello, unks. That's how she refers to me. I mean, it's very nice. And of course, that will, of course, dear niece, if you're watching the beginning of this show, be reflected in your Christmas present this year. Thank you very much. Yes, so nice to be able to um, have a little video from members of your family. Isn't it fantastic how we can do that now? You know, just a, a live face ache thing. Was it face ache or face FaceTime? A little live FaceTime thing. You can talk to each other at the other end of the world. I did it when I was in Israel, in America. You can talk to your sister back home or members of your family. Oh, it's just wonderful how we can do that now. Now, uh, talking of videos and all things like that, has anyone been watching the new series? Oh, good morning, Terry H. Good morning, Terry H. I haven't seen you for a couple of weeks. Have you been working or something? What's going on, Terry? I haven't seen you for... Oh, oh were you so drunk the night before that you didn't wake up? More likely the story, I think, Terry. Is that right, dear? Do try and keep with us most of the time, lovey. <laughs> I think you're the only person there this morning, to be honest. But we don't worry about numbers. <laughs> well, I'll worry if it goes to zero, OK? We don't worry too much about numbers. Unlike the people on The Apprentice. Now, did anyone... Is anyone watching the new series of The Apprentice? I've just managed, because I hadn't watched any of them until I think Wednesday this year, uh, this week, and there's been four of the shows so far. I don't know how that's happened. Four sh I'm sure it hasn't been back on four weeks, has it? Because, of course, it was in Israel. I think they must have shown two shows one week or something like that. But anyway, uh, I managed to catch up on the fourth show, which was this week today. And as usual, you've got the usual reprobates who think they're better than everyone else. And they come on there and, uh, yep, I am Lord Sugar's apprentice. I will step on anyone and anything to get what I want. And I just think, what horrible people they are to think like that. Don't you think? Where is the compassion gone? You know, about, you know, so you step on. And I know people, I know, the sad thing is I know people like this. I absolutely know people like this who will, indeed, they don't care about anyone else's feelings or their state of life. If they want something, they will go for it, get it and sod everything else. And virtually all the people on that program are like that. There are a couple... Uh, there was one particular lovely lady who's already been fired, unfortunately. She had a scarf on, scarf round her head. Can't remember her name. She had quite big teeth. But she was, re I thought she was really nice. And she, she was out by, this, I think, the third week. I think she was up for, up for, th up for the third week, uh, gone by the third week. But the rest of them really are, you know, dog eat dog. It's, it's just a horrible world to be in, I think, business. If you like that, I mean, it's it's. I, I do know people like that. I could sit here and reel off a list of names. Believe me, I'd love to, you know. 
but they 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 would they know that I think like that about them? I don't know. Maybe they would. Maybe they wouldn't. <laughs> do you want the list of names? No, you're not having a list of names. Oh, Terry says, uh, very busy, dear. Been working lots and lots, much much to the reputation you like to create. I haven't had a drink since May. Oh, please, dear. Please, Terry. We're all friends here. We're all friends here. We can discuss adult subjects like your drinking problem. I mean, I could, you know, I'd, I, I, I'm happy to come up, you know, Perhaps visit Leeds and have a little conversation. I don't mind coming to one of those places with you. You know, Alcoholics Anonymous, if you're a little bit nervous about going on your own. I would happily take a night off to do that for you. That's the sort of person I am. Not dog-eat-dog at all. Anyway, so on to this apprentice. And yesterday's, um, or this week's, challenge that Alan Sugar set them was that they had to make their own youtube channel which i did years ago i mean how 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 in the past how much in the past are they so they had to make their own youtube channel and i think um it was the team with the most views that would win okay so they set about doing these youtube channels one team did a th what was it called a fat daddy thing okay so the little youtube ja channels were about a fat man fat daddy okay who was trying to lose weight and it was reasonably funny i thought it was okay you know i didn't see a problem with it and then you've got one of the team members saying that he thought it could be offensive and I thought, oh, here we go again. The politically correct people who don't find anything amusing. Um, it wasn't over the top funny, but it was something I would watch. You know, being a little bit overweight like I am, I'm afraid I've put on a bit of weight, as you know. OK, since losing almost a stone and a half, I've now put on about another three quarters of a stone. But that's still way, way below what my weight was last January. So do not worry too much. Chocolate biscuits, yes. Digestives, I know. And cheese and onion crisps are the main culprits, as well as bread. Must cut these things out. And I know at some point I'll cut all these things out again. I will stop eating those things again. Anyway, um, so I watched this thing and, 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 and the fat daddy offensive was one of them. Um, uh, and the bloke said, oh, I don't know. You know, I, I think this is offensive. Uh, I, I just I just. I just wonder if some of these people who are offended so many times by so many things ever do laugh at anything. The other team decided to go along like a mad chef's route who was doing cooking and she was there was two of them she was bright and bubbly the girl and the bloke was the one who kept getting things wrong and got flour all over his face and again that was mildly amusing i thought yeah that's okay you know um the oh i can't remember now let me just think Oh, yes. So after they made these videos and I found the teams over analysing all the time. They'd be discussing what parts of the video were fun, what parts of the video were not fun. And I thought to myself, in my mind... The whole YouTube thing is just a bit of fun. Maybe I go about it all wrong. But I find the whole thing, you, you, you've you got to be having fun to do it. Rather than thinking, is that bit funny? Will that be offended? Offending someone? Will that do that? Will that do that? No, just go out and bloody well do it. That's what I do. Maybe that's why I haven't got many viewers. <laughs> But they analyse everything. And that's the same with so much in this world today. Everything is analysed all the time, isn't it? 
Oh, maybe, uh, and, and uh, you know, the people, they sit there with the calculators. Click, click. Dan Wood, who I work with in West Five, is a great fan of his calculator. The entire night, he sits there working out to the nearest penny. How much they will make on a bottle of wine. To, I mean, to the nearest penny. And he's not the only one. Are you, Dan? You're not the only one. There are so many people who are like this now. Their entire lives are focused on squeezing every last penny they can possibly get out of whatever it is they're, um, they are selling or doing. They are just so worried about losing a fraction of a penny or a cent. Good morning, Marge. Good morning, Marge. Marge is here this morning. Good morning, Marge. And happy Halloween to you as well, Marge. She sent me a little uh, Halloween note yesterday. Happy Halloween. And I just think this, this over-analysis of everything is just too much. It really it gets my goat. It really does. There was a post on Facebook this morning, OK, from... It's either a newspaper or a website. I can't remember now. Let me see if I can find the exact place for you. Pink News. Pink News? Is that it there? No, can't find that. No, Pink Floyd News. <laughs> Pink Floyd. We don't need no education. Duh. No, I can't find that. Anyway, it was Pink News. And it was a, a, a picture of that bloke in North Korea. Um, King John... I can't remember his name. You know the one, the, the, the bloke in North Korea who had gone to this children's orphan's place and there was a picture of him and behind him were the two toys, OK? And... The, I'm going to see if I can find this. One minute. Let me see if I can actually find this. I might even be able to show you a picture. I don't know yet. Uh, bum 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 ba. Now, where would that be? If I've... If I've put a comment on something, will I be able to find that? Or maybe not. Oh, gosh. Uh, or if someone's liked something I've done, will that be there? No. Oh, hang on. No, not that. No, not that one. No. Quiz night. No, I can't find it. Sorry. Anyway, so there were two toys on a shelf behind where uh, Mr. King, that, that North Korea guy, uh, behind where he was having his little photo shot done and these two toys were one was in front of the other okay but they were close and this pink newspaper gay publication was saying how, how you know that th they were they picked up on this as if someone had done it purposely or or, or, or like that I, I wish i could find it hang on let me see if i've got, got to find this story for you pink news let's let's try that on there pinknews.co.uk let me see is it there da, 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 da. Bah, bah. um oh it's not there is it no it's not there it's not there and i thought why 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 is that um hang on pink news maybe north korea Will that, will that find something? Ah, oh, there we are. Got it. Got it, got it, got it, got it, got it. Right. So, see if I can... Oh, I don't know. Am I allowed to show you this picture? Maybe not. I might not be allowed to show it to you because it's a, a co copyright thing, isn't it? But anyway, in this picture, right, um... The Supreme Leader, Kim, Kim Jong-un, that's it, Kim Jong-un, there's the picture, right, there's the picture, let me just write that down, what's that there, oh, uh, 12, 16, okay, there he is, and in this picture, the pink news says, while there's nothing to confirm the placement of the toys was intentional, 
Um, it seems to be good as an accident. And it goes on. Because, of course, being gay, I think it's illegal in North Korea. So they've picked up on this picture and put it on there. Now, it does, it, it you know, it... <laughs> If it, if it was done as like a comedy story, I could almost accept it, but, but it's not. I think reading into it, it's like a quite serious like little article there. And I think what, what a thing to pick up on. If I overanalyze that picture and come out with some old tosh like that. Similarly to what the people in The Apprentice were doing. Oh, that bit's not funny. That bit. Instead of actually going out, taking your camera with you and having a bit of fun with it, they were analysing every aspect of this thing to, to hopefully get more viewers. When they'd made their videos, the ones who did the Fat Daddy then took them in to this video website type place um, where uh they decide whether to use the video they've made on their website. It could have been called BuzzFeeds or something like that. I can't remember now. BuzzFeeds possibly or something like that. So there we have three youngish people who are now sitting in front of this laptop watching the Fat Daddy video. And Fat Daddy did various different things. He did some boxing. He did a bit of running, you know, with with proper uh, personal trainer type things who are mega fit that we all want to look like, but we won't always look like, but we won't all end up looking like that no matter what we do. And so they're, they're watching it. And, uh, you know, one of them, this one, one of this, one of these boy, uh, he was a boy, probably about 28 20 30 something like that he's watching this video with his with it and he's going oh oh you know and he says, i think that could be offensive oh get real will you lighten up a bit what are they teaching people in schools now to not affect no one's going to be saying anything soon because they're so bloody well frightened of offending anyone all the time aren't they well i'm offended that you're offended so go away, you silly little boy. And then the woman on there says, oh, don't know if it's quiet for us. I thought, oh, get real. You know, you're so, so full of him. So full of self-importance, dear. These people are so full of self-importance. And then the the, 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 the the chef one, the one where the two cooks and he was being a funny chef, they put their video on and said, oh, oh well, it's quite amusing, without actually a far smile on their faces. <laughs> you, you kind of think, do these people ever laugh at anything? Do they actually ever laugh at anything at all? Do you have a sense of humour? Or are you just going to sit there and pick and pick and pick at people's um, bits and pieces all the time. If you don't want to watch it, don't bloody watch it. I suppose, mind you, that's their job to watch it. It's their job to sit there and decide whether it's good enough for their little little website, bless them. Oh, it's so, such important people. Very, very important people, aren't they? Um, And I think, in the end, it was down to... Uh, the amount of views and one of them got something like 3,500 and the other one got 3,200 and that that was like in just two days of being up there and I thought well <laughs> you know I'd give me right arm to have 3,000 views to one of my videos so I don't know how they managed if they were that bad how did they manage to get 3,000 videos in such uh, 3,000 um uh viewings in in such a short space of time so they can't have been that bad. And then there was a, a, a young lad on there. Very good looking. Very good looking. And one of the teams brought him in because his channel is watched by millions of people. OK. And they say, what sort of people watch your channel? And this is a good looking boy, remember? And I said, oh, well, I found it's mainly, um, I think, 16 to 19 year old females who watch it all the time. I think they're entertained by my... No, they're not entertained by you, mate. It's not what you're doing. It's your looks. 
It's your looks. If you are, look, okay. If my nephew, Jimmy, did his own video channel, there would be thousands of pictures, people watching it because he's good looking and young. Whereas I am just good looking. <laughs> All right, well, maybe not. But they're not, uh, believe me, they're not watching your talents. You are young, you are good looking, all the girls want you, and that's why they're watching, mate. So already, <laughs> I'm at a disadvantage. I'm telling you now, if you are young and good looking, and you have a video channel, you will get thousands of views and you can probably make a little bit of money from it if you are middle-aged and average and doing exactly the same show i would put money on it that you wouldn't have a fifth of the views so don't kid yourself and i remember years ago i remember years ago um when I was just starting DJ and I was 21 years old and I'd gone into this gay club and there was an old DJ there, Dolly DJ was his name. And I would say, well, I've got so much to share with my work. And he, he would say to me, they're not interested in what music you play. All they're interested in is your looks. That's it. And I never believed him. I never believed him. You know, there were a few people who used to come to his nights and that's it. Well, that's what's happened to me now. There are now a few people, a few people who come to my little discos and that. Unless I'm tucked away in a box and they can't see me, then then that's it. No, it, no, I still get, a, there's a good crowd that come along. Do they come along to see me? I doubt it. They are just there. And that's how you get... Lots of views. You've got to be young and pretty. And when that's passed, you better bloody well have something else to back it up because you'll have nothing. And this this boy on the YouTube, I don't know, his videos, they're all right. He does good videos, right? But let me tell you, the young girls are not watching it for the content. They want to look at you. They want you. That's why you've got millions of views. So they brought this boy on board and said, yes, he mentioned it on his thing and this, that and the other. And so that was it. But it was real over analysis of this. Even actually Lord Sugar, who I have great respect for, you know, he's got it to a wonderful place. He watched the Fat Daddy video and thought it could be offences as well. Why, why are people worried about offending people all the time? You know, you, you would never get anywhere. You'd never get anywhere. I'm surprised, really, that they are um, still showing things like Dad's Army on the telly. Aren't you afraid that the, the BBC, are they not afraid that that might offend the Germans? And showing, are you being served? OK, are you not afraid that that might offend gay people? Well, I watch, I watch, I watch that. I watch Are You Being Served? It is hilarious. There is no offence in that at all. But I can guarantee some idiot at the BBC will have at some point said, oh, should we be showing that in this day and age? It might offend gay people. I'll oh, give it a rest. Good morning to Rory, who says, good jokes, Chris. The glasses you were wearing look like mine. Oh, yes, I got these. I got some uh, newish glasses. I got these from Sainsbury's for about £10. They're only reading glasses. I think they're 1.0 or 1.5. They, they do make reading things a lot easier because I'm actually looking at my computer screen now. And to be honest, you know, some of it's a little bit blurred and I have to have to have to go a little bit closer to it. Terry H says, I agree. I watch another channel of two gay guys. They get 50,000 views each day for their videos. The comment section is full of so fit. Oh, you're fit. You're fit. It's the same on the Facebook. Have you ever gone on a Facebook page where someone might have had, might have had their chest out or something like that and all the old blokes are on there, aren't they? Oh, you're looking good, mate. Looking good. I never get messages like that. Looking good, mate. Looking good. In the, they, they, they don't actually send those messages to, to tell them that and leave it. They're hoping. They are hoping 
to get a message back saying, oh, thanks very much, come round, mate. That's what they're hoping for. It's pathetic. Absolutely pathetic. It really is. Marge reckons I'm good looking. I have very sexy eyes. ER Marge, take them, take them home with you. <laughs> and Marge is watching on her new RCA 9-inch tablet. Oh, I like to be watched on a 9-inch. I really do, Marge. She's got a new tablet. I haven't got a tablet. I haven't got a tablet. It's true, though. It's true. If you're young, good-looking, get yourself a YouTube channel, make yourself some money while you can. And then when the viewers drop off, just stop doing it and do something else. Email address today, chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. You can join in if you want by Skype. My Skype username is, all one word, Chris Reardon, C-H-R-I-S-R-E-A-R-D-O-N. And there's a phone-in number as well. London, local London number 020 6358 020 Or if you just want to sit there and listen to me rabbiting on for the next uh, half hour or so, then that's fine as well. All right, my darlings? Uh, Rory says, shall I ring in? Yeah, give me a minute, Rory. Give me a minute, Rory. Just just after... Yeah, yeah ring in now, Rory. Be nice to hear from you. Ring in now. Um, and then at the end of this week's... Uh, apprentice Lord Sugar always fires someone he got rid of all three of them it was great he fired all three of them I love it they were just so useless and the one right at the very end she was begging him to say he says you're fired oh please Lord Sugar give me a you're fired please Lord Sugar I won't let you down I promise I've taken everything you're fired three times he had to say you're fired it was hilarious she was practically on her knees begging him absolutely begging him to stay I love it I absolutely love it anyway let's take a call then uh, Rory's on the line in Fulham in London good morning Rory hi Chris how are you doing you okay alright thanks very much yeah, nice to hear from you <laughs> I, I, I've been doing voiceovers so I didn't have to I didn't have to worry about my looks of <laughs> <laughs> I, I do wonder sometimes, Rory, if I should have just stuck to the audio version of this show because I used to do just audio. Uh, <laughs> no, I, I think I think both is brilliant, actually. I, I, I've been doing a thing called Ruar's Got Talent, which is a friend of mine in New Zealand called Harry. I'm sorry, what I, was that called again, Rory? It's called Ruar's Got Talent. Ruar? Um, it's. It, it, I, I think it's called Ruar. It's a it's a spoof on the the, the talent shows and my, and my friend Harry is doing it in New Zealand okay how do you spell that Ruwa I think it's R-A-W-A and it's uh, he's still in the he's still in the moment of uh, putting it together yes and what I've been doing is it's it's a spoof on talent shows you see yes and, um, and I've been uh, re recording my lines uh, in, in in the UK yes emailing emailing, emailing them over to Harry and the part I'll be playing is the part of a British filmmaker because they're all New, Ze New Zealand actors, you see. Oh, yes, yes. So, so I have to speak deliberately, poshly, like this, you know. <laughs> well, it works for you, Rory. Well, people say I sound posh naturally. I, I, I wonder what the viewers think. Maybe maybe they think I sound posh. You're, you sound naturally <laughs> posh to me. Well, you live in Fulham, don't you? I, I do. Who can afford yes. to live there, Rory? Sorry? Who can afford to live in Fulham, mate? Uh, somebody extremely rich and somebody very city city wise, really. I think. <laughs> Have you got a little photo of yourself there, Rory? You could send, or maybe I can grab one because I think I um, can put a little photo of people up when they call in. Hey, if you want me to, that is. Yeah, Look. yeah. Choose one from Facebook. Yeah, I've got one now. Hang on, if you copy, like. uh, I... copy image, save image as, isn't it? Save image as, and yeah. then we, that'd be quite nice to put a little photo up now and again of people who are who are calling in. Yeah, I'll, I'll send you the link of Harry's film when it when it's done, and you can have a and you can have a laugh at my expense. Yeah, please do. Here's Rory now. Okay, carry on. <laughs> I was um, what was it? Oh yeah, I I, I liked I liked your in interview with Auntie Brenda. Oh, did you enjoy yes. that? Yeah, she's yeah. very popular, you know. Yeah, I. Uh, it, she's your mother. She's your mother's sister, isn't she? That's right. Yes, there were three of them. Um, there was my uh, mother, of course. Um, there was. Was Uncle, your mum called Betty? 
Pardon? Was your mum called Betty? No, Bridget, right? Bridget, Bridget, Bridget. That's it. She was called Bridget. Um, there was my auntie Brenda, who's right. still around now, and there was Uncle Michael. Uh, so the, they were brothers and sisters, and uh, two have now gone, so w w it's just Auntie Brenda who's left. Um, she was married. Uh, her husband died about four years ago, and she lives in a lovely place called Tring. Um, very lonely, very, very lonely. There's, it's one of those places that's a bit... It's quite out the way, and not really people go past. And um, so I ring every night, you know. I, 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 w I would like to do a bit more, but... Yeah. Difficult, difficult fitting everything in. I've just, funnily enough, I just noticed um, I was typing in mucking about having to do, uh, things to do where she lives, and apparently there's a paradise wildlife park there in uh, Hertfordshire. Yeah, I'm, I'm just trying to let me see where the it doesn't actually say the address. You know, the amount of websites that don't actually have an address, and you have to search around. You'd think it would be on the first page, wouldn't you? Yeah, some of, some of them are very easy to... Here we are. Others are awful. Yes, Bro Brooks born in Hertfordshire. So that must be yeah. fairly close to her. So I'm going to see if I can arrange for uh, um, us to go there for a day. I think that'd be quite a nice thing to do. Just before it gets too cold, you know, Rory. Yeah. Yeah, so that's Auntie Brenda. You like you liked her chat, did you? Yes, I, I did a similar interview with my grandmother, who's been dead for 17 years. Ah, yes. And and recently, my uncle published it on 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 CD, oh, and, uh, and my my friends asked to listen to it in in my in my room here, and it was like having her in the room, even though yeah. she's been dead for seventeen years. The mm. power of the voice, I think, comes to mind. You know? I've got a little. Um, I used to do an overnight radio show. Do you remember Liberty Radio in London? Yeah, I remember that. Yes. Yeah, yeah. I used to do the overnight program there, um, yeah. two till six thirty a.m. Mm -hmm. and uh, I got mum to ring in once and mum was really? a bit funny about things like that and she, so she, she, changed, she changed her name she wouldn't tell me her name or where she lived or anything so, she, so I got her to ring in because right. uh, it, was, it was one of those shows you know that time of the night you don't get many calls so you try and generate calls by any way you can and she yeah. rung in and I've got that somewhere Wow! I've, I've got that piece of audio somewhere and I think it's the only audio I've got of my mum. And I just wish that we had video things. Around. Of course, we had video cameras then, but not like now where it's instant. You know, I can pick up a, you, or you and I can pick up a mobile phone, create yeah. a video, push one button, say something to it, push stop, and it's done. Yeah, it was absolutely. so easy now. It's amazing with technology. You know what you were saying the other day about technology that's used today and wasn't used yet wasn't used yesterday yes well my dad my, my my dad noticed that when we had power cuts in our street when i when i used to live 10 minutes 10 minutes away all yes. the neighbors came around during power cuts and my dad used to say it's amazing how sociable power cuts can make people could be people be because there's no tv <laughs> We all used to have power cuts in the 70s. I remember yes. those. The candles used to come out. I can't remember what we used to do, though. Yes. I wonder what we did when uh, maybe I went out on my bicycle. Or so. I was always out on my bike when I was a youngster. Always on my bicycle somewhere. Yeah. I was. I, I enjoyed your um, Israel videos, uh, particularly with, with the beach and the ice creams. Oh, I, when, I, when I come out of that Dead Sea, it wasn't exactly a James Bond moment, was it, really? No. <laughs> <laughs> my, my, my dad worked with somebody who, who, who was looking to employ somebody for head of security. Oh, right. And, so, and somebody called James Bond applied. No, really? And he said, I absolutely had to employ James Bond regardless of how good he was. Oh, I'll have to. That must be an interesting job, don't you think? Yeah. You know, working for the security service. I don't suppose for one moment it's as glamorous as it's made out to be on things like James Bond or something like that. But I would imagine that would be quite an interesting thing to do, work for security services. I tell you what, Rory, I'm glad, <laughs> I'm, glad I'm home now because it's all kicked off in Jerusalem, isn't it? Have you watched the news? I've, I've seen bits of it, yes. Yeah, they've all started throwing I mean, weapons at each other and this, oh, it's yeah, just yeah. such a shame, you know. You, you do actually feel the tension and it's yeah. only Jerusalem. You don't feel it anywhere else. When you're in Jerusalem, ultimately, you can feel a bit of a tension going on in there. But, 
you know, whatever, really. I'm, I'm just <laughs> glad I got one before. Um, Terry H thinks you sound posh. Terry oh, H in Leeds, uh, yes. And Marge says, Rory sounds to me being American like one of the gentlemen of uh, on Last of the Summer Wine. Do you what, did you ever watch that? Da, 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 da. Hello, hello, Marge. Hello, Marge. I've seen it a few times with Peter Salis, who does the voice of Wallace. Yes. In Wallace and Gromit, yes. I love the tune. Lovely tune, that is. It's not on anymore, is it? They stopped that a while ago. I, 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 I think that right. was, was Nora Batty one of the characters? Yes, she was. Nora Batty, yes, yes. 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 I, I, I haven't seen that for ages. I, 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 something I've never seen, believe it or not, is Doctor Who. Oh, really? What, I've never? Just, I've never seen that. I oh, was, it, um, but I, 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 I did see the, uh, the, the music of the Krypton Factor matched up to the... Uh, Footage of the of the Doctor Who theme. Yeah, there's a few things like that on on yes. um, on YouTube. I yeah. think it's. I'm not sure. It might be the last one tonight before the Christmas. I have a really? feeling it's the last Doctor Who tonight. I'm not sure. It's either this week or next week. Anyway, uh, this this guy, the older guy, I think is better than the last two. I I wasn't keen on on Matt. I thought it was all right. Yeah, and I thought I know David Tennant was popular, but then again, I think that uh, I, I I I think he was all right for me. He was all right, but not quite the character. This guy, I think, is the character of Doctor how Doctor Who should be an old 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 older chap, sort of Tom Baker type. Yes, yes, yeah. a Tom, yes, a Tom Baker type. John Pertwee, perhaps someone like that. John Pertwee was my Doctor when I was a child. You know, really. Oh, Terry H says Home Firth. Is where Last of the Summer One was filmed near me, about thirty mile away. Really, gosh! Interesting bit of trivia, just briefly about Doctor Who. Yes, the the voice the voiceover for the Daleks was the same man who did Zippy and George on Rainbow. Who is he really? Uh, he is the late Roy Skelton. He was a very good voice artist. Oh, I didn't know that. He was the voice of the Daleks. And he's gone now, is he? Yes, he's uh, he died a couple of years ago. Not yes, too long ago. Yeah. The um, I, I'm planning to come, I'm planning to come to the cher- to the cherry tree on Sunday the Sunday the ninth. Sunday oh, okay, the 9th. so that's next week, is it? Yeah. All right. Yes. Well, we look forward to um, to having you there, my friend. <laughs> come and sing us a few songs. You'll like it there. Yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. I'll uh, I'll, I'll try and I'll try and sing a. Uh, New ones as, as well as traditional. It's I, very easy going. Have you seen the um, the little videos I've done there? I've enjoyed them. They're very yeah. good. Actually. So you, so you get a get a sort of idea of the place and that it's yeah. it's quite large in there. You know, plenty of space to move around, Rory. I remember you singing singing the Candyman. Do you remember? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Candyman, Candyman the Candyman. <laughs> Brilliant. And what, one last one last thing. I, I I'm running out of jokes. So if if the viewers have any good jokes, do 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 let me know. What do you mean you're running out of jokes? Where are you telling those then? Well, I, well, I, 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 um, I, I, I uh, topical, topical jokes, or uh, I'm, I've, I've got, I've got a few uh, bread and butter jokes. But uh, in fact, uh, um, the the, be- the best way to avoid dropping a, a buttered bit of bread on the floor with butter on it is to drop it on the floor first and then butter it. <laughs> <laughs> In that case, in future, I shall get my bit of bread, throw it on the ground, and then pick it up and butter it. Then it won't fall down again. That sounds good to me, Chris. <laughs> I've got to get off the bread, Rory. I've put some weight on again. Have oh, you really? Yeah, yeah. My nieces and nephews, are, my niece and nephews will, will happily tell me when I've put weight on. You know, they, they don't think twice about it. Really? I was the, the, the best crisps to eat are, are, um, are, I think, the squares, the Golden Wonder squares. You oh. can get those as part of the meal deal. In yeah. Sainsbury's. Yeah. And I, and I have this thing where I go. Yeah, but I, I, you see, I don't, I don't understand how they got the audacity to call it. It's not a meal. It's a snack. A sandwich, a bag of crisps, and a can of drink is a snack. To me, that's not a meal. A meal is. I don't know how they ever got away with starting to call things meals like that. To me, a meal is when you go home, you have potatoes, vegetables, uh, and and um, most people a piece of meat. Unfortunately, a piece of dead animal. <laughs> on their plate that to me is a meal you know a meal is not going to kfc and having a, this thing out of a bit of cardboard <laughs> and a few skinny tiny little chips 
with covered, I mean, laden in salt, or McDonald's, a burger and chips and, a, and an apple pie in a cardboard box is considered a meal. It's a snack. But you see them around here. We've got a big KFC here, one of those drive-in places. And actually... They've just been um, uh, extended. It's even bigger now. Massive car park they've got in there. And you want to see these cars. They're, they're, and, and it's on the same bit of road. And after the KFC is a petrol station. Well, you can't get in the petrol station on a Sunday afternoon because of these cars queuing up to get into Blooming Kentucky. Oh, God. Oh, it's awful. And that's their Sunday meal. You know, two parents and a couple of children in the back of their Renault Clio and they're queuing up to get in there uh, and, and they get their great big... I don't know, what, do they take these things home or do they stop somewhere? I don't know. They've got this great big bucket full of fried chicken and God knows what life that chicken has had, you know. But forget the whole vegetarianism thing for a moment. I mean, I wouldn't touch it with a barge pole. The best bit about it is the batter. You know, when I was eating meat, you know, the best part of that Kentucky Fried Chicken was the spicy butter batter around the outside. You could just pick that off, eat that, and throw the bit of chicken away. And then what do they do after that? They chuck the big old cardboard box out of their car window when they're going along motorway. Dirty <laughs> bastards. So Dirty bastards, all of them, dear. They don't even recycle the cardboard box? No, no. Same with McDonald's. You see some people in there, you know, they're there for breakfast, for lunch and for dinner. Stuffing their faces full of processed meat and all that. Oh, God, it's just... And no wonder all these people are so fat. Well, what mind you, you know, mind you, me vegetarian, still fat. You know, so so just simply changing to vegetables isn't enough. My problem is processed foods. Like, I mean, you could you could argue that all bread is processed foods, couldn't you? Really, you could argue that. Yeah. Um, knock out the processed foods, and the weight does fall off. It does. And chocolate sure. biscuits. I love chocolate digestives. Don't you, Rory? I I, I must confess, I do with a, with, a, with a cup of coffee. Yes. Yeah. What, what's your favourite food, Chris? Um. At the moment, I really like the Linda McCartney um, burgers with mozzarella injected into them. I really like those at the moment. Um, sometimes I do what I call Mediterranean vegetables. You know what they are? Um, I've, I've heard of them, but go ahead. Okay, so that would be tomatoes, peppers, courgettes, um, perhaps onions, and I'll put that in in the oven, in yeah. a, like a Pyrex thing, all those things in there, for about an hour or so, uh, with a jacket potato, then it comes out, I open up the pork, put it on top, and loads of olive oil on there as well, a mm. um, bit of cheese on top, and that I really like that. But t that that's quite a, it takes a, a, about an hour to do that. Mm. Yeah, I like, um, I like chocolate, only mm. milk chocolate. And it has to be either Cadbury's or Galaxy. I can't stand that Lind's... Is it Lind? Posh is it, chocolate. Is it Lindor or something? Lind. Lind. L-I-N-D-T. Can't stand that chocolate. Uh, I think Twist... Swiss... Oh, good morning to Jimmy Butler. Nephew Jimmy Butler is with us this morning. Ah, ah, ah. Good morning, Jimmy. Um, Swiss chocolate, I find doesn't do anything for me it's all supposed to be the best chocolate in the world doesn't do anything for me and i really hate toblerone do you like toblerone occasionally what oh why do you, why, why do you, is it is it the, the, the honeycomb bits you don't like um no then it's more nutty isn't it is it is it nuts it's, it's, in that it's like that it just doesn't just, just doesn't taste nice to me toblerone <laughs> don't like it mm. And Yorkie. Yorkie's got a funny taste to it as well. I don't like that. But the Cadbury's chocolate seems to have changed. It doesn't taste like it used to. I've, that's The, the no, Americans that. bought that and have mucked about with it, I think. No, the, I, think, I think the most traditional one is the, the uh, dairy milk one. Yes. Uh, well, dairy milk is, of course, Cadbury's, but it, it doesn't taste... This, they've done something to it. And it tastes a bit different. I don't know what. Galaxy is still the same. I quite like Galaxy. And try this, Rory. Right? Yeah. Try this. Um, next time you get a bar of chocolate, take a square off and just put it on your tongue and see if you can just let the entire piece melt without chewing it. That's quite nice. 
that is you know do you know i i with talking about melting chocolate i i used to get those 99 like the one you had in your the one you have when you want you on a holiday, holiday. flakes and, yeah uh, the, the flakes and what i used to do i used to take the flake out and save it the best bit till last and by the time i'd eaten the ice cream the flake had melted yeah lovely Ooh-hoo. Oh, very, very lovely! Nice I there. could, you know, I could just do an ice cream now. They do. There's one of those um, kind of gelatarios or something like that. They're they're called. There's one in the garden centre, about ten minutes drive from here. And I'm very tempted now to finish my show, have dinner, and drive down there and get one. It always tastes nicer from there than getting it out of your own freezer, don't you find? I I, I agree. Probably because you made the effort to buy it first. Yeah, yeah. That would be the it. Corner shop, there it is. Oh, Rory, well, I look forward to you coming down to the karaoke next week at the Cherry Tree. Okay, so so do I, matey. And I'll, uh, I'll send you the link uh, for, when, for when the, the film Ruara's Got Talent is finished. Okay, yeah, please do. You have a nice day, Rory. Take care, Chris. Thanks for calling in. Bye-bye. There we are, Rory in Fulham in uh, South West London. Yes, good morning to Jimmy Butler. Oh, I did send him a text message yesterday, text message to Jimmy Butler, because last night I was working somewhere in uh, London and there was a tranny trying to chat me up a transvestite was trying to chat me up dear short skirt halfway up her up her up her bum and oh no not for me dear not transvestite dear no it's not my sort of thing I'm afraid thank you Jim <laughs> oh, you didn't reply to that Jimmy I was most offended most offended Um, yes so a couple of things I'd like to do I think I would like to take my aunt to the um Paradise Wildlife Park, which I now found is in Broxbourne in Hertfordshire. And it's got all sorts of things. The animals are not in cages as such, but they are, of course, still enclosed in this large wildlife um, place. And in, 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 in the best of worlds, you wouldn't enclose animals at all, would you? really but I suppose from a zoo to a wildlife park the wildlife park is the lesser evil of the two isn't it it might be nice to see the they've got lions and jaguars and all sorts of things in there I do believe that these animals should be allowed to roam freely in Africa or or wherever they're from Um, but the sad fact is in Africa and places like that they've, they've got people hunting them I saw this awful program the other day um, on people that pay $10,000 to go to certain places of these countries to shoot them. They call that a sport. Okay? They call shooting an animal with a gun. Oh, Oh, yeah, I've been hunting. No, you haven't been hunting. You haven't been hunting. Hunting, it was when maybe, you know, you got your your, your bare hands and you go running, and then you stra- Can you strangle a lion? No, of course you can't. Of course you can't, you sad little man or woman. No, you can't. You're, you're, you're 200 yards away with your rifle. That animal hasn't got a chance. That's not hunting. And I've seen pictures of, of, of people on the internet proudly there with their gun... And a foot on top of a dead lion. Oh, it's just sick, isn't it? Sick. And the sad fact is they're not always safe in these places. When they're out in the wild. But anyway, um, I would like to go to Paradise Wildlife Park and perhaps take on to Gwenda. And of course, the United Kingdom Talk camera will be there as well. I say camera. You see, the long show. A lot of people are surprised about this. Um, a chap called Tom. young lad called Tom comes to the quiz night at the Mayflower um, occasionally in uh, Rotherhive, where I do every Tuesday night. And all oh, I've, I've had terrible journeys there the last couple of weeks. They've like been taking two hours to get there. So this week I've found a cinema nearby. So I'm going to go in in the middle of the afternoon, catch a film and then go to work from there. I think I might try that. And I've got free parking in the cinema, which isn't too far from the pub, rather than come across London again at that time of day. So I'll see if that works. Um, 
and Tom says, um, what camera do you use to make your videos? I said, well, uh, the long video I do on the Saturday, uh, that's live, and I also, I, I actually re I have two cameras on me at the moment. There is a Logitech uh, high definition webcam which is carrying the show live on the saturday afternoon but directly above it is also a canon high definition video camera a little camcorder type thing all right and that's how i record the saturday show now the short videos during the week and if you didn't know i do short videos during the week you can find those at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk all right, unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. And by the way, you know, if, if, if you're in the car or something like that, you might just want to listen. You can download an audio-only version of this show, which is also on iTunes. If you just type in United Kingdom Talk on the iTunes, it should find the audio-only version of this, and you can subscribe completely free of charge. Uh, but you only get the long Saturday night, the, the long Saturday show, OK? You won't get the short ones because they're more visual. Um, the short videos uh, that you can find at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk, those are all done, all of them are done on an iPhone 5. OK? They're all done on an iPhone 5. It's on the high-definition quality setting. And... Um, very happy with the results I get from that. And that is how the short videos are recorded. A lot of people are surprised by that, that they're actually done on an iPhone. There's a lot you can do on an iPhone. I actually was watching the BBC News the other day, and they were interviewing. There was someone being interviewed by the BBC and lots of other people. And one, a couple of people were actually holding up an iPhone with like a, some sort of foam thing around the outside of it. And they were holding it up to this bloke's mouth like that. And that worked quite well. Didn't it? All right. Um, let's have a little look there. Uh, one of the other things I'd like to do is go and visit the Poppies in London. Has, has anyone seen this? At the Tower of London, they have made lots of ceramic poppies which are completely filling the moats that go round the Tower of London. Now, these have proved an extremely popular attraction. It's only just been completed, I think, or it's about to be completed. And millions and th thousands of people are going to see these, much to the point that it's causing a little bit of a problem in the area. So they've now asked people not to go because there's so many going. And I would like to go and see these because they're only there for a certain amount of time. And then I believe they're going to sell the poppies off for £25 to raise money for charity. Although I believe that whatever charity is only gets a very, very small percentage of that £25. I, I'm sure I heard it on the radio this week. It was something ridiculous like £2. All right. So I would like to see those. Does anyone know if they're lit up at night? Because that would be the thing to do. Maybe I finish work on Tuesday night after after my quiz and then I could drive to the Tower of London and have a look, you know, at like 11, 12 o'clock at night. Might would be a much better time to go. Are they actually lit up at night? That would be a good time to go. It would look quite nice at that time as well. And if I do, I'll take the camera with me as well and I'll show them to you as well. All right, Rory says, I saw the poppies yesterday. You can buy them. Was there a big queue, Rory? There must have been a big queue there, was there? At the Tower of London? Eh? Thank you very much. Yes. Um, What else have we got here? Oh, yes, Nathan Rayo. Nathan Rayo. Here's the chap... If you've been watching the short videos, you'll know what I'm talking about. Uh, who writes the disaster weather stories on the front page of the Daily Express, as well as doing other reporting. He's been on television and all that. And I didn't realise this was one of the boys that used to come into the uh, uh, place I worked in Camden Town. But I was there for 18 years. And he used to come along to the 70s and 80s night when I think he was 19 years old. Well, years have passed and I've been, you know, taking the mick out of these Daily Express weather weather pages. And then suddenly I get this, this little message from someone saying, I'm glad you find my weather pages entertaining. And I thought, oh, who's that then? And I look, you know, and I said, and it turns out it's that boy. 
you know, who's now in his very, very, very early 40s. He made no point of saying, I think it's just 40, just 40 or something like that. Um, but it's the same lad, and we've been having a little bit of a conversation now. Uh, you know, because I'm very proud of people who, who achieve so much um, since when I knew them, when they weren't really doing much. And there, were, there, were other, there were other people. There's a guy called Simon who you may have seen on the tele television doing this Aus programs, various programs about Australia. He used to come to the Black Cap on a Monday night as well in Camden Town. And he's, you know, wonderful programs now on the television he makes. There's Nikki French. She represented the UK in the Eurovision Song Contest doing um, Don't Play That Song Again. I used to book her at a little place called Harpo's in Ells Court 25 years ago. And she was trying to, to get on to be a singer. There's various members of boy bands who I see on the telly. British boy bands, not the new ones. Ones that have come and gone. Knew them for a while when they were little teeny boys. There's one lad who works for Stilet Stiletto Entertainments. And Barry Manilow, he works, he lives in Los Angeles, I think it is. He used to come along to the Tuesday night karaoke. There's various X Factor people who used to come along to my karaoke nights. And there they are on the telly. And it's just wonderful, 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 wonderful to see people who have got somewhere who I used to know. I think it's fantastic. And there I am, still doing these little quid nights, little YouTube things, and oh, it doesn't matter. I'm happy enough. I'm happy enough. Um, oh, I got the quiz job on Monday nights, boys and girls. I'm pleased to tell you, we did the first quiz on last Monday. That was just a try it. And I've got, got a new quiz night on Mondays, which is at the Pembroke Pub in Causton in Surrey every Monday night from 8 o'clock we, we did try 7.30 but found that was that was far too early there was no one uh, ready there unfortunately to do that at, so I should be doing that every Monday the Pembroke in Causton in Surrey at 8 o'clock on Monday nights finally I just wanted to say something about the oh Rory said there was a big big queue there I, yeah I expect there was I'm going to try and go at night Rory I think it may be better to um hopefully go at night hopefully it will be floodlit i don't know if it's floodlit or not though that's the only thing um finally i just wanted to say something about the uh terrible crash yesterday uh the virgin galactic spaceship that they've been trying to get going now i think it's already way behind time but they're trying to make it as safe and all that and this virgin galactic spaceship is supposed to take you to the edge of the earth and look down on the earth and then back down again uh richard branson has already sold quite a few tickets for this at enormous expense we're talking a couple of hundred i think hundred and fifty thousand pounds if you want to go on this thing and you're only up there for a few minutes but it's the experience and if you've got the money there whatever you know go go for it well one of them exploded yesterday it was on a test flight and it went up and it went bang. And I feel very sad for the pilot. Uh, one pilot, I think, was killed. And the other pilot is seriously ill because he managed to flick his ejector seat and got out somehow. But the plane broke up and exploded. And it is very, very sad. But I hope they don't stop um, trying to do this. I, I wish I would be alive for space travel. I would love to see it, to see it happen. But it happened safely. And I was talking to my friend yesterday, and he says, unfortunately, this is what's going to happen. If you're trying to do something that is as, as technical as that, full of explosives you know basically even when i'm driving a car you have you are operating something that is a controlled explosive you are exploding petrol 
in your engine. And sometimes, as you well know, it goes wrong. Cars go up in flames. But driving is reasonably safe. You know, they would have thought that that spaceship was as safe as they could possibly make it when it went up. But obviously something went wrong and it exploded. And I feel, although he wouldn't be watching his show anyway or his family, you know, I feel I want to thank the pilot who died for at least trying to, to move on something in the human race. Very sad, but hopefully they will carry on and they will find out what went wrong and fix it and try again. It's a weird thing to, to think that one day humans will be travelling throughout space. I'm, I'm sure we will. And it will be like a normal thing. Not while I'm here, unfortunately. Not while my nieces and nephews are here, even. They, they will probably get to see someone go to Mars. I might even get someone to see someone to go to Mars. They will see a bit more. But I think possibly my nieces, my niece and nephew's children may be around to see us go even further than Mars in a spaceship. A lot of people would like to see me go to Mars or further on a one-way ticket. <laughs> Anyway, that's it from me today. Thank you very much, boys and girls, uh, for watching and listening today. Do send in an email. My email address is chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. Chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.